Good morning guys. So let's design a romance novel book cover in Affinity Publisher version 2. Follow this class and design your own book cover print ready. Or maybe you just need a front cover for your ebook. Well we can do both. Or both a front, back and spine for your print book. This is your go-to tutorial. So, set up the layout of your cover in Publisher. In this step, we'll be creating a cover for a paperback or softcover book with a B format dimensions, a standard book size of 5.06 by 7.81 inches, or if you like, 130 by 198 millimeters, and a 16 millimeter spine. Note, you can adjust the width of the spine to suit your own purposes by using the spread properties or page tool to adjust the width of the document later. Step 1. Open Publisher and go to File, New. Select the print preset to suit our exercise. A5 is probably good. We're going to change it anyway. So do not press Create yet to create the page. We've got a bit to do. In the New Document window, go to the Pages tab and set the number of pages to 1. Then uncheck Facing Page. Step 1 continued. From the Page Preset drop-down, on the menu, right at the bottom, select the New Category icon and create a category named Custom. Well, you can name it anything you like, but to keep it simple, let's name it Custom. It will appear at the bottom of the list. Just click on the new category name to be sure you have it selected. Step 1 continued. Now go back to your New Document Layout tab and set the width to 130mm and the height to 198mm and select Prefer Embedded. Do not press Create yet. Go to the little icon to the bottom left of the page, Preset drop-down and select Create Preset. Type B Format Paperback into the Name text box, and you can see it there, and select the little drop-down menu to select your new custom category. When you're sure you have the preset name right and its intended category right, click OK. If you don't select Custom, the preset will be placed in the Print category, the one that's ticked by default to start with, because that's where you found the original A5 one. OK will create the preset, and your setup will look something like this. When you finish setting up, your preset category will be saved, and you can open a new document and apply the preset easily. This is the industry standard print size for a B format paperback. Do not press Enter yet. Step 1 is still continuing. When you're finished setting up, your preset category will be saved and you can open a new document and apply the preset easily whenever you want. This is the industry standard print size for a B format paperback. Do not press Create yet. Back in the new document window, set the margins to 8mm on all sides and set the bleed to 3mm on all sides. But do not press Create just yet. <laughs> Step 2 continued. Check that all measurements are OK in layout, pages, colour, margins and bleed. When you're sure all is well, remember to click the icon on the top right. You'll notice the little star next to the name B Format Paperback Star. That means there are unsaved changes. So you've got to click on that revolving arrows there to save and overwrite the current preset. Otherwise you'll be saving the A5 presets and they're no good to you. You want to save the ones you've just made so that it is truly a B format paperback. Step 2 continued. Now it's good. You'll see that star is gone from the word paperback. Now you can click on Create at the bottom of the page. This page is the correct size for the front of your cover only, or your front cover only. Though we will want to submit a whole cover to the printer, complete with spine and back cover, 
It's a really good idea to design, to design your front cover only at first. This allows you to judge better how the cover will look from a reader's perspective when the book is on display in the bookshop. You can faintly see the bleed and margins around the edge there. We'll use the document setup tool later in the tutorial to include the spine and back cover on the document, but for now, let's work on the front cover alone as it is. So, number two, create the rule of two thirds grid. Now, this is a design element that's very popular. It helps to focus the, um, the design. Drag out grid lines from the rulers on the top and the side to create guides to show you the position of the rule of two thirds view. Vertical rulers at 43 and 86, horizontal rulers at 66 and 132 respectively. Select the rectangular picture frame and drag to create an image frame that extends across the page, meeting the edge of the bleed at the top, bottom and right sides, with the left side of the frame sitting just on the left trim line edge, not on the bleed. So step two in adding the photos. Now the workspace is all set up, so now we can add the photos that we're going to use. Go to File and Place and select the photo of the couple. Align it with the grid. In the rule of thirds, the areas of focus should be near where the lines cross. Step 2. Switch to Photo Persona. Use the Selection Brush tool to select the outline of the couple. Then go to Select and Refine Edge. This will help you get some hair back into the selection without adding to the background. You can also adjust the edge for the most or the best effect. When you're done, set the output to Layer Mask and click OK. When you're done, set the output to Layer Mask and click OK and that's what you get. It removes the background completely. Now place a picture frame onto the scene. Place the background image into the scene below the couple's layer. You'll have to move it down there of course. Resize it to fill the canvas and move it so that it doesn't interfere with the foreground. Adjust the foreground image of the couple so that it fits to the bleed nicely and stays within the two-third guideline. Okay, step one in let's adjust the photos. Now that the photos are all there, but they don't look that good together yet. Let's work on that. So select the background image, go to FX and Gaussian Blur. Adjust the radius to make the background seem more distant. About 14 pixel radius should do it. Go back to the couple image and select the layer with the couple image on it. Select the transparency tool, it's the wine glass on the left hand side, and drag a line from the top to the bottom of the layer. Fade out the lower third of the image. And you can see there that it's faded out quite a bit. Switch to the photo persona and select layer, new live filter, blur and then Gaussian blur. Set it to about 8.2. Next, select the brush tool and the color black and set the brush to a soft large size. You can see it there as I mentioned, select the brush tool and the color black and set the brush to a soft large size. Soft round 512 is a good one. Paint over the mask to reveal the sharper image of the couple's faces. Go back to the publisher, Persona. You can see where I've painted over their faces there, and that's really sharpened them up. So, section 5. Let's add some decorative petals to the image. Our cover looks quite good already, but we can make it even better with a certain accent. 
What do you say we add flower petals flowing across the cover? So place a new layer on the stack and place a picture frame in the lower half as shown, then place the petals image into that layer. Switch to the photo persona again and select the selection brush tool and highlight each of the petals until you have them all selected. And if you look carefully, you might just be able to see the dotted lines around each one there as they're selected. Select Refine, and in the drop-down box, select New Layer as the output. Click on Enter. Switch back to the Publisher Persona now. The petals have their own shade of red which is quite bright, so we need to adjust it to the scene. Add a levels adjustment and colorize the petals to match the overall image tone. Step two, let's add some motion to the petals. They're supposed to be flowing, remember? <coughs> so go to Photo Persona again and select the petals image, then go to Layers, New Live Filter, Blur and Motion Blur. Select an angle fitting the direction of the flow and adjust the distance. I've used 41 degrees in this case. Now this is a very sensitive adjustment, adjustment <clears throat> so be careful as you're doing it. And the result so far. So step six is adding special effects. In step one, we're almost done, but there are still a couple of things we can do to make the cover even more appealing. Let's add a trendy bluish tint to the scene by adding a new layer. Add a color balance adjustment with a blue filter. Now copy and paste the whole composition onto a new layer. Add a strong Gaussian blur to it First copy all layers, group them, then paste the new copied layers above the group. Group the new set of layers, then select to below, set the lock on in the Transform Studio, and reduce the selection to within the margin lines. Go to Layer Mask to Below will create a mask from your selection, leaving the borders blurred and the main image in focus. Now, step one. For now, the cover looks just like a beautiful poster. Let's add the text to turn it into a real book cover. Use the Frame Text tool to add the title over the petals. I use the Rochelle font, white, with the first line of the title bigger than the second. You can adjust the settings in the Character panel to make the text look the best it can be. I used font size 70, tracking 25%, center aligned in the text box and on the cover as well. Step 2. Add the author's name on top of a frame text tool. I used the Trajan Pro font, 24 point, smaller than the title, and I coloured it with the colour of the woman's shirt. Don't forget to align it as well. Step 3. Let's add a snippet of an encouraging opinion in the empty area of the background. It should be smaller but still visible. The red colour of the font links nicely to the warmth of the lower half of the cover. And there the cover is done. Doesn't it look beautiful? Now step seven is expand your cover. In step one, it might be a good idea to duplicate page one of your document in order to keep a copy of the front cover alone. 
In fact, it's a good idea to actually save your work at this point and then go to File, Save As and save the entire document with a file with a different name, front page only for example. To make a duplicate of your existing page 1, see on the left hand side there, click on page 1 then click on Duplicate Page in the Options panel there. Option 1 to do this, click page 2 of the document to bring it up on screen. Select the document setup from the selection panel and click once on page 2 of the document to select it. In spread setup you will see two separate spreads, spread 1 and spread 2. Check selected spreads and it should highlight spread 2, that's page 2, or simply select page 2. Now navigate to the control panel and adjust the width of the page to 276mm. This will allow a back cover at the same width as the front cover, 130mm plus a 16mm width spine. Unlock both of the group layers in the layers panel. Select all the elements in the page by selecting both the layers. Use the Move tool and move them along to the right until the image frames meet the edge of the right hand bleed. Relock your layers. Now if you don't get those selected right, don't panic. Just make sure you've got them all selected otherwise when you move it, you'll leave some behind and you'll see immediately that you haven't selected them properly. From the left hand ruler, pull out a vertical guide to 130mm to mark the left edge of the spine. Pull out a second guide to 65mm marking out the centre point of the back cover. You can also pull out guides to 138mm and 122mm to mark out the centre point of the spine and the right hand margin of the back cover. You can see the markers as you drag the bar. Place your cursor on the left hand ruler and hold and drag to the right. Now go to View and Lock All Guides. Now that this part, Design the Spine, note in this tutorial we will be creating a spine with a contrasting colour to the rest of the cover. Therefore, it's very important that the spine's dimensions on the artwork match the dimensions of the printed and bound spine exactly. When creating your own artwork for print, be sure to ask your printer to give you an accurate width for your spine before creating your cover work. Step 1. Return to the Layers panel and lock all the existing layers. Create a new layer, renaming it as Spine Artwork. Move this layer to sit below the typography layer and above the front cover artwork layer. Select the rectangle tool and drag to create a frame 16mm in width that sits between the guides marking out the edges of the spine. Extend the length of the frame so that it extends to the top and bottom bleeds. Set the stroke colour to none and the fill colour to C75, M52, Y29 or K0 and K0. And in fact I've got it there, it's a, it's a teal blue so it matches the front cover. Select the picture frame tool and drag to create an image frame 16mm in width as before and 58mm in height. Position the frame at the bottom of the spine, resting the bottom edge on the edge of the bleed. Set the box colour to transparent if it's not already the default. Now select the box you have just placed. Go to File, Place and select the petals image as we used earlier for the front cover. The image should fill the rectangle and use the handle to turn the petals image so it's more vertical. Set the tr select the transparency tool again, that's the wine glass on the left side. Select the image in its layer panel. With the blue frame showing, that's the outline of the blue frame, place the pointer exactly on the bottom of the rectangle at the centre point 
and you'll see a dot and a green vertical line appear with a dot and the bottom intersection of the vertical and horizontal line. Carefully click and drag the marker towards the top of the rectangle. The red background will appear and you'll slowly move it towards the top of that frame so that the cover of the spine, the bluish teal colour, slowly fades down to the red of the petals. Select the image frame again and edit, copy and edit, paste, which will put it in exactly the same place and you, you'll think it's nothing there, but there is. Shorten the length of the frame to about 25 millimeters and then drag it and position it at the top of the spine. Switch the angle of the gradient to minus 90 degrees so that the image fades downwards. In the Layers panel, lock the spine artwork and unlock the typography layer. Select the Type tool again uh, to drag to create a text frame 8mm in height and 45mm in width. And you can place that anywhere on the cover there at the moment till you type in the author's name, and in my case Robert Chalmers, and set the font to Futura Standard, Medium Condensed, Size 25 point and in the character panel set tracking to 90 all caps and the font color to white. Select the text frame and rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Position the text frame centrally on the spine. Now select the text frame and edit copy edit paste and alter the text to November flowers. Set the font weight to light and tracking to zero. You may need to extend the length of the text frame to accommodate the text. Position the frame centrally on the spine, just below the author's name. And you can see just there how I've done that. Now, creating a back cover. Your cover is starting to look more complete. Now all that's left to do is put together the design for the back of the cover. Return to the Layers panel and lock the Typography layer. Unlock the Image layer, select the Picture Frame tool and drag to create a frame 130mm in width and 102mm in height. Position the frame so that it covers the top half of the back cover, meeting the edges of the bleed to the top and the left. Next, go to File, Place and select the background image we used earlier for the front cover. Arrange the image proportionally in the frame. Go to Transparency now and position the marker dot on the top bleed line. No image will be visible. Now click and drag the position dot downward and slowly expose the image until you're satisfied. Select the image frame and Command C, Command V to create a duplicate of the image and frame. Click and drag the frame to the lower half of the page and flip vertical. If the image is slightly misplaced, maneuver this second image frame to the bottom of the back cover, allowing the top edge to meet the bottom edge of the first image frame. In the Layers panel, lock the image layer. Create a new layer, naming it as Back Cover Artwork, and position this below the Typography layer and above the Spine Artwork layer. Remaining on the Back Cover Artwork layer, select the Ellipse tool, and holding Shift, drag to create a perfect circle 113mm in diameter. Set the stroke colour to none and the fill colour to white. With the shape selected, click Transparency tool, that's the wine glass. Click Centre dot in the shape. Go to top left nav bar and set the type to radial. Click on the oval shape just to the right of type radial. It displays a selection interface. Now go to the top right of the colour display and set the colour to white. Go back to the Type Oval Settings interface and drag the slider all the way to the right. 
center that circle between the borders, between the margins. You'll need to place a barcode on the page as well if you are intending to sell the book in shops. Create a frame using the picture frame tool and file place a generated barcode image. Ensure the barcode image is large enough to be scanned with ease and don't crop the code too closely around the edges in case any of the code's data becomes illegible. I made this one 20mm by 45mm. It's a genuine barcode from one of my books. Look it up if you like. Hey, even buy a copy. I also created a second frame just below the barcode and set it to that red colour we love so much. This is a suitable place to insert pricing for the book using the type tool. Lock the back cover artwork layer and unlock the typography layer. Select the ellipse tool and holding shift Drag to create a circular shape 88mm in diameter. Set the stroke and fill colour to none and position the circle centrally on the back cover right over the white circle. Convert the circle to a text frame. Select the type tool. Type the book's blurb setting the font to Futura standard medium size 12 point leading 14.4 point and align centre and font colour to black. You can highlight the first few lines of the blurb and make them slightly bigger, around 13 point, and pull out the first line in bold and a red swatch, C19, M98, Y89, K10. Just as a note, if you want your text on the back page to conform to the circle you draw, do the following. Draw your circle of 88mm, go to Layers, Convert the text frame and then enter your text. So export your book cover for print. Great work. Your cover artwork is complete and it looks awesome. Now all that's left to do is to export the artwork to PDF, ready for printing. Step 1. Go to File Export to open the export window. Select PDF brackets print from the format drop down menu. Name the file and click save. In the export PDF window, select PDF for print. In the area section, select current page. You must have the double spread page highlighted as it's the one you want if, you're, if you've kept a copy of only your front cover on page one. Maybe you saved the front page alone in a separate file, but that's okay. You just want this double spread page. Include bleed and tick the box. Well done. You now have your book cover ready to be sent to the printers. You can choose to print your cover on coated or uncoated paper stock, both of which have their own unique look and tactile feel. Communicate with your printer before you send the artwork to print to receive samples and or their advice on paper stock and weight. In this tutorial, we have learned how to create an attention-grabbing, genre-appropriate book cover for a conventional romance. The design traits for this genre include a soft photographic background and high-impact text. Good use of gradients give the cover a, a sense of mystery and give the whole cover a romantic appearance with pops of soft white light. So, please subscribe. Don't forget to because it helps me on my own journey. See you in the next video. Go ahead. Make my day. Subscribe.